what is up YouTube and welcome to another video. In this video I want to show you guys a Visual Studio Code plugin for Kubernetes. When working in Visual Studio Code it's nice not having to leave the editor. I'm a terminal kind of guy but I know there's a lot of you folks out there who likes a pre pretty user interface. Now this plugin is exactly that. It is pretty cool with when dealing with Kubernetes so let's see what we can do with it. So first things first, we're going to head over to the Visual Studio Code website and you'll notice on this link um, there's a page for working with Kubernetes and VS Code. Now you might see Azure here, this is not limited to Azure. In this video we're going to be using Kubernetes on our local um, Docker for Windows to access it and you can access any Kubernetes cluster. Before we begin, we're going to need to have Docker installed and we're going to need kubectl. Now I've made two videos that will help you get started with this one. One is getting started with Kubernetes on Windows. Windows. That'll get you up and running with the cluster that you're going to need in this video. And another one is configuring and using kubectl command line to interact with Kubernetes. So with a local Kubernetes cluster up and running, we're going to want to do three things. We run kubectl, config, get context, and you can see that I have two contexts, but the one I want to use is the Docker desktop. This is the Windows Kubernetes cluster that's running um, on uh, Docker for Windows and the asterisk here says the cluster that I'm pointing to. So that's my current context. If you are not pointing to the right cluster, you want to use kubectl config use context to change to the right cluster. And then we do kubectl get pods and we can see we have no um, pods and I can just do kubectl get nodes and we can see we have our, our node up and running ready to go. And now that we have a cluster up and running, let's go to the marketplace and install this thing. So what you want to do is head over to the extensions area and type Kubernetes. And you'll see the top one come up by Microsoft. Um, Kubernetes, you just say install. And that is pretty much it. We've installed the plugin and you'll see this icon on the left hand side here appeared for Kubernetes. So you can click this guy and what we can do is we can start configuring the plugin. So it's important to understand the defaults. Now this um, plugin over here is simply going to run kubectl that we've installed. So if we install kubectl at the default location, it'll pick up that kubectl and use that. If we've configured kubectl with a default kube config file, um, it's going to use that config file. So the same thing as we've done here, um, these commands that we run here will be exactly the same thing that we see on the left hand side. So if we click Kubernetes, you'll see clusters come up and it'll basically read the same cube config file that kubectl uses and the same kubectl that we've used. So it just automates kubectl in basic terms. So those are the default settings. Now, if you don't want to use the defaults and you have a little bit of a, a more complicated setup, head over to the little gear icon, click on settings, go over to this little JSON area and you can see here that VS Kubernetes has its own section in the settings file and you can check out the documentation on all the settings that's available here but basically what you can do is you can point this um, plugin to different kubectls and you can also point it to different cube config files so you can tell it to maybe you want to only point this to your development environment so that you don't accidentally access your production environment that's something you can do or you can split out this a um, little bit further now there's another tip here if you press Control shift p it comes up with a little menu you just type kubernetes and a lot of the functionality is actually listed here so what we can do is we can also say there's a section here for um, config and here it is here, Kubernetes set cube config. So you can click that and you can go and add a new config to a different location. So that will automatically populate this file for you. Now let's run through some of the basic day-to-day -day functionality that one does with Kubernetes. Usually you'd use the command line to do it, but let's do that um, using the VS Code plugin. So in terms of navigation, you can pretty much do everything that you used to do with kubectl. Um, you can navigate your clusters. The first thing you want to do is click on a cluster and you can do a bunch of things here like show the cluster info. You're going to want to um, expand the namespaces. So you can see I have a namespace here. 
and I have a monitoring namespace as well. So we can like click this one and we can say use this namespace. So that'll set our default namespace to monitoring. So everything we do when we navigate around um, is done at the monitoring namespace scope. So I can see the nodes, I can click the nodes, I can see everything running on this node. So these are all the pods running on this node. I can right click the node, I can say describe and that'll give me some details about the node. So this is like similar to the kubectl describe command. Give me a lot of stuff about the um, resources running on this node, allocated resources, system info, capacity, labels, and conditions and events. You can then drop down the workloads, deployments, and we can see different deployments here. So I have Grafana running in this cluster. So if I click expand that one, you see I, I have one Grafana pod, um, running i can click down i can see it's in a running state and that's its ip address similar to stateful sets and daemon sets um, we can do that as well i have a node exporter daemon set running as part of my monitoring on this cluster i can expand that see when you click into this node exporter um, it automatically pulls down the yaml manifest for you as well and this is pretty neat so you can have a look at the yaml that's currently deployed there if you're troubleshooting um, is related to the configuration of this uh, pod. We also have jobs, cron jobs, pods. So I can see all the pods running in this namespace. I can then expand them, see the statuses, the IP addresses. If I click into that, it's also gonna bring me the YAML file for this um, alert manager pod that I'm running here. So I can also navigate the network so I can see services. And in this case, I have a bunch of services running in this Kubernetes cluster. So if you wanna troubleshoot where the service is pointing and whether it's actually mapping to the right endpoints, you can expand it and you can see it's pointing to three pods. So this service is load balancing internally between three of my pods. So this is a kind of a good way to see if there's a problem with a service and you're getting a connection refused or something and there's nothing on the back of that service listening, you can have a look here and you should see that the pods are showing up. Now the cluster navigation is, is cool, but what if we're a developer or we wanna troubleshoot applications on Kubernetes? So let's take a look at deploying applications and what are some of the things we can do with our application on Kubernetes using the plugin. So what we have here is the GitHub repo called Docker Development YouTube Series. This is the source code that I use in reference to all my YouTube videos. So this source code is available on GitHub for you to follow along with each video. So what we're going to do is we have a Kubernetes folder here and in my Kubernetes um, development series, we, we take a look at a bunch of things like deployments, config maps, ingress, secret services. Um, there's a readme file as well. So what I want to do is I actually want to do um, the deployment of all these resources, but I want to use the kubectl plugin and show you guys um, how, it, how it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the Kubernetes icon. Um, I have a namespace that I've created. It's an empty namespace. If we click that, we can see the manifest here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say use this namespace as the default. And then what I'm going to do is I have a deployment here. So if we take a look at this deployment YAML, um, what we're doing here is just a basic deployment. Example deploy. Um, we've defined the um, name of the container as example app. It's just running a Python container. Um, it's exposing port 5000. We've got basic volume mounts. Um, basic Kubernetes deployment. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go control shift P Kubernetes and I'm going to say create. So when I do that, we can see a deployment has been created. So if I go to the Kubernetes icon and I go to workloads, we should have a deployment here called example deploy. Now, if I take a look at this, we can see we have two pods. They're in a red state. If I click them, they say they're pending. So there's something wrong with this um, pod running. If we take a look, we can also see the pods running under the pod section and they seem to be pending. So what is wrong here? How do we see what's going on? So we, uh, what I want to do is I actually want to right click and say describe and it'll go ahead and describe this for us. We can see our pod is pending. And if we go down, we can see everything looks okay here. Conditions, but we see events. So there's a failed mount warning um, because the config volume as well as a secret has not been found. So the describe command here in this plugin allows us to, to troubleshoot um, pods and deployments running in Kubernetes. So we can see here that I don't have a config map and a secret, they're missing. So what I'm gonna go do is go back to my source code. I have config map over here. I have a config map.yaml. 
and I'm gonna hit Control Shift P. Kubernetes create. I'm gonna create that um, config map, and I'm gonna go to the secret, and I'm say Control Shift P, and I'm gonna click Kubernetes create. And that's gonna go and create that secret as well. So if I head back to the Kubernetes section and we look at configuration, we should now see a config map. If I click that, it'll load that down from the cluster and we have a secret. If I click that, it'll load it down from the cluster as well. So now that I fixed that, what I can go ahead and do is I can go delete these pods. So right click this guy, say delete now and click the delete button in the bottom right corner. And same for this one, right click delete now and then we can go ahead and refresh and we should see new ones come up so kubernetes automatically creates new pods because our desired replicas is two and we can see this one is now running and the other ones will stop running so if i refresh again we're now in a good state so now that we have our application deployed i also have a kubernetes service so what i'm going to do is say Control shift p and i'm going to create my service as well so now that I can, now I can access my service from outside because I have a type load balancer. So let's go back to the Kubernetes section. We hit the refresh button and we go down to network. We should see our service is up and it also has an endpoint. Click the endpoint. We can see the endpoint is all good. We see our service is up and running and two pods automatically come up here. So that allows me to open up um, the browser and just go onto local host and I can see my hello world application is up and running. If you don't have a type load balancer type service that's exposed publicly, what you can do is you can also use the port forward command. So we can go to our workloads deployment, select one of the pods, right click them and say port forward. And it'll ask you what port you want to map to. So our container is is running on 5000 and it detects that. So it's going to open up 5000 on our host. So I hit enter and it starts to port forward for us automatically. I can then open up the browser on port 5000 and access my application. The other thing we can do is we can show the logs of our application as well. So if you right click one of the pods, we also have a show log and a follow log. So you can follow the logs live if you're doing some debugging or you can just hit show logs and it will show you the logs of your application. The other cool thing this plugin allows you to do is you can actually make live edits of stuff in Kubernetes. So if I go to my deployment and I click my deployment, you'll see it'll load the YAML file for that deployment. And what I can do is I can go and add a label here. So I just want to try a test and I go hit control S to save that. And I, I hit control shift P and I say Kubernetes apply. When I do that, it's going to show me the delta. So it's going to say I had no label and now I want to add a label. Do I wish to apply the setting? And I just say apply. And the deployment has been configured. And if we go back to our deployment, we right click and we load it. We can see that that label has been successfully applied. So you can basically edit this deployment on the fly um, without having to download the YAML, do kubectl apply yourself. There's another feature that we can do is we can actually get a terminal login to the container automatically. So if I right click this and I say terminal, it's going to give me a terminal connection into the application, right? So if we also click on one of these pods and we go down, we can see that our volume mount is mounted into slash configs. So now that I'm in the application, I can go cat slash configs and in there we have config.json and we can see so we validate now that our um, config has been updated to prod and we do that by using the terminal feature to go inside the pod and take a look at the container so that is it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed it um, leave a comment down below on things you'd like me to cover in the future like and subscribe and until next time peace